I'm annoyed. I think I found my favorite nav menu ever, and the reason that's annoying is because it's not the first time I've said it, and I already know it won't be the last. I'm thoroughly impressed, Build in Amsterdam. Your site is awesome, and the untrained eye might not even be aware of all that's going on here. Your staggered grid of projects is very satisfying to look at. I love the fact that it auto pans when I stop interacting, and the way you vary the rate of speed across the columns. I don't even need an icon to know that this is a nav menu toggle, but you kindly rotate the menu text in and out to let me know. When I hover the toggle, it expands, and the menu text becomes static. When I press down, the button shrinks. When I let go, it expands and changes color, and the text switches to close. At the same time, the menu slides halfway up the height of the window. Instead of fading in the nav items, you opted to shift them up and bring them forward. All of this contributes to the overall effect of your menu being revealed in the same way that a curtain would reveal the stage. In fact, I think that of all the cool effects on your site, the curtain reveal effect has to be my favorite. So let's see if we can recreate it. We'll start by making the body of the page full screen and set the background color to black. Same for the main element, but we need a background image that really represents who we are. Imagine we're this guy. We want to cover the whole screen so people can see our magic flying hoverboard. We want to be centered horizontally, but not vertically, because we don't want our elegant wavy locks to be cut off. We also want to be positioned in a relative manner, so we can be in the middle of the stack, sandwiched between our nav menu and nav toggle. Our nav toggle will be a button with two icons inside of it, but we'll get to those in just a sec. Let's imagine we're the nav toggle now. Unfortunately for the person developing us, we require an extraordinary amount of effort in order to look nice. We need our size increased, we need to sit on top of everything else, be shifted halfway across the screen, up a little bit, to the left a little bit, and our background color needs to be more relevant. We need our default border removed, we need to be rounded, and then given some shadow for depth. The cursor should be changed to a pointer when we're hovered, and some of our features need to change smoothly rather than instantly. When we're hovered, we need to be bigger, and when you press down on us, we need to be smaller. We're clickable by default, but nothing happens because we haven't been told to do anything yet. We're going to need some instructions that tell us what to do, and a way to reference those instructions. Essentially, the goal of our instruction should be opening and closing the menu. But not only that, we need to keep track of whether we're opened or closed, and we need that information in a place where all of the other elements on the page have access to it so we can tell them what to do in response. Fortunately, HTML elements let us store information with them, and since, in our case, the body element surrounds all the others, we'll go ahead and store it there. We just have to prefix our info with the word data, give it whatever name we want, and we'll set its value to no since the menu is closed by default. Now in our instructions, we can update this value by first checking what it's already set to and then switching it to the opposite of whatever that value currently is. All right, remember those two icons we're supposed to have? They're just as difficult. Now we're a pair of icons. You can call this one open and this one close. Ideally, we need to be stacked on top of each other, centered, given a better color and a better size. By default, we need to be invisible and our size needs to be reduced. When you hover the button that holds us, the open icon should appear, but not too suddenly. It should happen over a short period of time. Good thing we have a way to know the current state of the nav menu because the open icon only needs to appear if the nav menu is currently closed. If the nav menu is open, then it's the close icon who should appear instead. Only in this case, once it appears, it should stay put and not fade away like the open icon does. Wow, after all that, we finally arrived at the part where we can make things happen. And unfortunately for Goldilocks, when the nav menu is open, he or we need to be shifted upwards by 50% of our height. Oh, and again, that can't happen too quickly, so we'll tell ourselves to chill out and take our time. Now that we've got some space down here, we can start thinking about our actual nav menu. We need an element to contain our nav menu and another element to contain the links, each of which will contain a label and an image. The problem here is that by default, our images and text don't know how they're supposed to look yet. Now we're a nav link. We're not as difficult as a button, but we still require some work. First things first, we can get rid of our underline. Our text is the wrong color, wrong size, and we don't need a margin, but we do need to be uppercase. Our image should be smaller, ideally around 20% of the width of the window, but we can't have it getting too small, so we'll set a lower constraint of 400 pixels. We won't bother with setting a specific height, but instead we'll opt for an aspect ratio that is always maintained. The corner should be round, and we'll need to add back some space between the image and our text. Oh, and the proportions are obviously wonky, so we'll have to fix that as well. Each of us looks good on our own now, but not in relation to each other. Fortunately, we have an outer wrapper to control our overall position on the page, and an inner wrapper to help space us correctly. As an outer wrapper, we should take up half the page, be mounted to the bottom and left of the screen, and sit at the bottom of the stack so we'll be behind the curtain when it's closed. As an inner wrapper, 
We know we need some space between our links, so we'll set our display to flex to make this possible. And we can't be getting too comfy with the rest of the page, so we'll add some space around us as well. By default, we should be shifted downward and have our size reduced a bit so that when the menu is open, we can be lifted up and brought forward. Again, not instantly, but at the same rate as the content that sits above us. It's amazing what you can accomplish by simply breaking down a big problem into all of its parts and then piecing it back together. This tutorial was pretty intense, however, so if you feel like you need to chill out a bit, I'd recommend watching this one next.